it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink. And listen. There's an old bell tower near my house, and it's strictly forbidden to enter. Now I know why. By Reggae Junkie G. Part 1 Have you ever heard of the Bell Witch? I hadn't until one of my friends at school told me a few years ago as we passed through the woods near my town. There was a good spot there next to a stream where we used to hang out with our group of friends. In the other direction, there was an old church which was mostly just a foundation with parts of walls still standing and a huge bell tower that still stood intact. We were always told to never go near it by our parents. Our parents were told by their parents and, well, you get the idea. Now I know this is Scotland and the Bell Witch was in Tennessee, but the stories and legends of this bell tower have similarities to the Bell Witch Cave. My friend Brian told me about Bell Witch Cave and said that it was the same entity who haunted the old bell tower. How or why was never included in the story, and I never did believe any of it anyway, although the tower had always piqued my curiosity. Well, we'd never gone against our parents' wishes before, however on a cold February in 2017, a few weeks before my 14th birthday, curiosity got the better of our young, overactive minds, and it seemed like a great idea at the time as we found ourselves suddenly buying torches with our own pocket money and gathering supplies for a little urban adventure. My friend Brian wanted to go at night. Well, I wasn't exactly into that. And we came to an agreement that we'd go during the day to check it out and then maybe decide whether we wanted to return for a nighttime visit. Now, I want to be clear that it wasn't because I was scared of some ghost story or some legend. It's because there could have been literally any weirdo in those woods prowling around for whatever reason. We were just young teenagers, and I don't think we could have fought off any psychotic maniacs that liked to hang around the woods alone at night. My name's Danny. Brian was, still is, my best friend. He just turned 15, and our other friend Liam was older. He was 16. He grew up next door to Brian, and he's always been kind of our leader, like the one we'd look up to. He was a tall, cool kid, popular in school, and had a girlfriend. I really found myself always wanting to be like Liam, but... In reality, I was nowhere near. I was short and kind of overweight. Brian was too, in fact. We were a bit of a mismatch of friends, but we always stuck together. We had a pretty random bag of supplies, but you can never really know what you might end up needing. We had torches that we just bought, a lighter and four candles Brian took from his house. I took my dad's hammer for protection, though. I can't imagine anyone of us actually having the guts to use it. A flat-headed screwdriver to pick locks, some snacks and juice, a camera and some pens and paper, thinking we could maybe map it out or something, I don't know. We hadn't really thought it through too much, to be honest. We all hail from a smallish town called Fort William in the highlands of Scotland. Near the north of the town, before you reach Ben Nevis, there are some old run-down buildings, not many but a few. Just through a small wood sits the old church ruin in a semi-clear area. It's fenced off with some signage declaring the building is a ruin, and it's dangerous, but the bell tower itself stands perfectly, as if it were constantly being restored. People have told me in the past, at obscure times in the night, or on a full moon, or sometimes at particular times on certain days of the year, you could sometimes hear the bells toll, as if they're in perfect working order, though the legends are pretty much all over the place and seem to bear little to no factual significance. History tells you the bells last chimed over 200 years ago, and I can also say, at the time, I'd never heard them myself, although I know of a few people who'd swear on their grave that they'd heard them multiple times throughout the years. It was a mild, clear Saturday afternoon when we took our trip to the bell tower, 1 or 2 p.m. if I remember correctly. Liam and Brian were able to climb the fence no problem after giving me a boost over. We stood looking at the bell tower, it must be 50, maybe even over 60 feet high. Oh, it's big. Made from old, large, 17th century ashlar stone and standing proudly next to the church foundations that have long since crumbled. The bell tower has no clock face. The bells were used as a call to prayer throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, from what I've gathered. And there are small rectangular windows on three of the four sides, leading all the way up to near the top. 
I've heard this is where clergy members and church volunteers or trustees would sometimes live, but also that it was used to house prisoners of the church who were waiting trial, primarily blasphemers and people accused of various crimes against the church that were regarded as evil, acting against God's will, or associated with some kind of witchcraft. Well, the history is very scarce. It's mostly vague and littered with stories or tales from unconfirmed sources, so we're really not sure what to expect inside. But what I have found is that between the late 16th and 17th century, up to 4,000 people were tortured and executed in Scotland as witches. As we stand there, staring up at the walls of the tower, I couldn't help but feel a chill run down my spine, just thinking of what could possibly have gone on within these grounds. I mean, in my head, it's all nonsense, but it doesn't take away from the fact that, at the end of the day, we really can't possibly know for sure what happened here all those years ago, and that tiny seed of doubt will not budge. We approach the door tentatively, looking all around for signs of life, not wanting to get caught. We had a large wooden door with a huge old-style lock that had been pulled out and a newer padlock higher up, which had held it shut. I quickly drew the screwdriver out and put it into the keyhole of the padlock. It was way too big to go anywhere near it, and I felt defeated already. I didn't know how to pick locks, but I figured I could have at least tried. Well, Liam took the hammer and broke the lock after three hits. The padlock didn't break, but the latch did, and the door opened slightly. A cold, musty breeze escaped the tower and made my nose wrinkle. Oof, it smelled like damp and old stuff. Liam opened the door, and we followed him inside. A large wooden staircase spiralled upwards, leading to the rooms on each floor. There wasn't much other than the stairs and one room on the ground level. There was no door to this room, and we could see it was empty, aside from leaves and bird droppings and piles of rubble. We began to climb the stairs to the first floor. We could see all the way up in the centre, and counted five floors plus an extra stairway right at the top that led to the bell. The crumbling stairs made cracking noises with every step, but they felt safe. We were sure they'd hold us no problem, until we reached the first floor and saw about ten or twelve steps lying crumpled in a heap that would lead us to the second floor. After seeing that, I felt myself being more careful on the centuries-old stone. Who knows if or when it could give way, and we didn't want to find out. On the second floor, there were two rooms, each with another wooden door. Only one was padlocked shut. We went into the first room, an empty stone room with a small rectangular window at one end. There was nothing else of note. Liam burst the other door open and we entered. There were two windows boarded up, and it was really dark. We could see two old wooden bed frames, one mostly broken up. All the chill in this room was bitter. The windows were lightly boarded up because they'd been smashed, and there was glass all over the floor. Liam and Brian walked out almost as quick as we'd walked in. I hovered around for a few seconds because I felt like something had me in its sights. In one of the corners I could almost make out what appeared to be a black mass, though it could have just been the darkness of the room. Even so, looking in that direction made my hair stand up, and I could feel adrenaline begin to flow through my body. I hastily left to find Liam and Brian assessing the stairway leading up. We'll come back with a ladder. Liam exclaimed, looking up and down, judging the height. I think my dad has a ladder that should just make it. Brian stared at me, looking for me to agree. Okay, I replied, uncertainty in my voice. We coming back tomorrow then? I asked. Liam turned around, smiling. Ah, fuck that. Let's do it tonight. He looked at both Brian and I with excitement building in his face. Brian laughed. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, and nodded in my direction. I was extremely dubious about this idea, but I didn't want to be the one to say no. I nodded at Brian and Liam, then quickly turned to make my way downstairs. I could hear them quietly relishing in the idea of this scary adventure as they began to follow me down. But the front door was closed. I tried opening it, but it wouldn't budge. I started to panic and shouted for them to hurry. Liam came first. What's wrong? He asked, looking at me and then the door. The door won't open, I choked. I felt like I wanted to cry. I felt like we were trapped here forever. 
Liam pushed the door and then gave it a shove with his shoulder. It swung open. I could feel the fear drain from my body instantly as I now began to feel stupid. I looked sheepishly at both of them. Oh, it's just an old door. Calm yourself down, Danny, Ryan said, stifling a laugh as he followed Liam outside. I felt like such a loser, panicking like that. We hopped the fence and began walking back. Since our exploration had been cut short, we found a park with some benches and ate our snacks while we planned out the night. We used the classic tactic of, I'm staying at Brian's, Liam's staying at my house, and Brian's staying with Liam. Then we'd meet up with our supplies and bikes before we headed back out at about 10 or 11 p.m., I don't know how Liam was going to sneak a ladder from his house. But that was his problem. Well, this was kind of his idea, so I could only hope he got caught and wasn't allowed to go. That night, at 9pm, I cycled out and met Brian at the end of the main street. We waited for Liam, who was notorious for being late. But to be fair, he had brought along a ladder on a bike. But how difficult that could possibly be, I had no idea. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt. 20 or 25 minutes later, Liam showed up on his bicycle with his bag and ladderless. Where is it? Brian asked sharply. Oh, looks like we can't go now, I was thinking to myself, half ready to jump back on my bike. Oh, I carried it up earlier. I can't cycle with a fucking ladder hanging off me, he joked back, then smirked at me as if he knew all I wanted to do was just go home. Oh, are we doing this or what? Liam continued after a brief silence. Hey, let's go. Brian nodded to both of us. Brian led the way. Liam was behind and I was at the back, trying to take my time. I seriously had a bad feeling, but everything in me wanted to prove myself to them and to prove to myself that I wasn't scared. We rolled up to the fence and set our bikes against it. Same as before, we all hopped over with no problem. I did think at this time we should have brought some kind of bolt cutters or something to just cut a small slit and move the fence in case we had to get out fast or whatever reason. Well, too late now, I suppose. Torches fired up, we made our way through the rotten wooden door, and instantly the ice-cold air pricked my skin as we entered. The air seemed different. The world was still, and complete silence fell on us as the wooden door shut behind us. We all stood looking up, the flights of crumbling stairs winding around the square building leading to the complete abyss above us. It made me shudder. Right, let's go, Liam said, just above a whisper as he grabbed the ladder that was leaning against the first set of stairs. We climbed up to the first floor, the three torchlights darting across the walls with every creak and rustle we heard. We came to the first floor with the two doors. Hey, uh, did we check both of these rooms earlier? Brian asked. Liam replied, Yeah, but maybe have a quick look again just to make sure there's nothing there. Danny, you look in that first room. Brian, you check in there. He pointed to the room that had been padlocked before on the other side. Uh, I'll get the ladder set up. I looked at Brian, who was only too quick to amble over to his door and open it to glance inside. I saw him disappear into the black as I hesitantly turned to check the other room. I opened the door slowly and looked inside, shining my torch to the back walls and corners. I couldn't see anything. I felt safe enough with my torch, so I entered the room. The door swung shut behind me, and I took one step to the left, behind where the door would open. Welcome to hell, children, a loud menacing voice cried from behind me. I jumped back and dropped my torch, the glowing red eyes on the head of what looked like a tall, slim, horrifying clown with the biggest smile on his face, his black and white checkered clothes soaked in blood as his head moved from side to side. Well, my heart was racing. I couldn't scream, I couldn't move, I felt, I felt like a... Dab right up and get your tickets to hell. <laughs> the head was moving side to side and the hands were moving back and forward. I was finally able to grab my torch after sliding myself away from the clown. 
Oh, you fucking pricks, I screamed as I shone my torch on the clown. It was one of those standing clown Halloween decorations that are set off by movement. Brian and Liam burst into the room laughing their heads off. I was shaking with so much fear, but also with so much anger. Fuck you two. I'm going home, I said, pulling myself to my feet. Daddy, it was just a joke. I'm sorry, Liam said, but still laughing like a madman. It was just a wind up, Danny. We won't do it again, I promise, Brian added, more sincere but still holding back his laughter. Well, I looked at both of them and just walked out, shaking my head. Let's get this ladder up, get this over and done with then, I muttered as I approached the fallen stairs. Liam set the ladder to the lowest hanging part. It wouldn't be easy, but it was definitely doable. Standing on the top step of the ladder, the stair came to about chest height, with some rebar poking out from front and sides. Well, you could just grasp these bars and push yourself high enough to swing a leg up. Liam went first and immediately started climbing the stairs to the second floor. I went second, and then waited for Brian. We walked up together, and Brian could tell I wasn't happy, so he tried to reassure me that there'd be no more messing around. I just wanted to go home. Didn't care anymore. We got to the second landing, and Liam was nowhere to be seen. I shot an accusing glance at Brian, and he just shrugged his shoulders. He was just as confused as me. There were three doors on this floor, one open and two closed. I suppose we just walk into these rooms and wait for Liam to jump out on us or something, I said sarcastically, rolling my eyes. <sighs> How fucking original. Uh, Liam, just come out. We're not here to play games, Brian shouted towards the open door. We were shining our torches inside, but couldn't see anything. Liam, just come out, man. I shouted next. A noise from behind us startled us both. The torches were immediately trained on the open door as we turned so fast to see Liam standing in the open doorway. I'm in here, idiots. Hurry up. Liam's voice came from the open room we were now glaring into with a look of confusion. Come and look at this, Liam said as he disappeared into the room. Brian started walking and I grabbed his shoulder. Hold on, Brian. What the fuck? Why was that other door opening? There must be someone in there, I said sternly, but my voice was trembling. It was probably just the wind. Nobody can get up the stairs, remember? Brian shrugged my hand from his shoulder then, as he turned to follow Liam into the other room. All sorts of horrors were racing through my overactive mind, but in the end I followed behind Brian. He was probably right. As soon as I set a foot into the room, Hey, Danny. A cold whisper echoed from behind me. I almost snapped my neck as I turned and shot my torch over to the door on the other side of the landing. The torchlight glided along the wall as I turned. Just as it met the door, the door quietly clicked shut. Part 2 Liam sniggered. <laughs> Look at this! There was a pile of dead birds lying in various states of decomposition by the window. Oh, that's rancid, man, Brian said, covering his nose and mouth. I stood a few steps behind, shaking. The light from my torch was visibly vibrating on the wall. Nobody noticed, but I was terrified. Brian and Liam were talking, but I couldn't focus. I felt myself being drawn to the room across the hall, like my very soul was being slowly pulled by some unknown force. Time seemed to slow to almost a complete halt, and voices echoed around my head. Danny! A voice came from the abyss, forming before my eyes. Danny! Everything returned to normal in a flash as I saw Brian and Liam staring at me, confused. I felt faint. Danny! You okay? I'm, I'm fine. I just felt a bit dizzy, I said, feeling like my legs were about to give way. I'll be okay. Let's just get this over with. Liam sniggered again at Brian 
and patted his back as if to say, What's his problem? I took no notice and left the room. The others followed behind into the hallways where we stayed for a few short minutes. Well, let's try that other room then. It was Brian that broke the silence. The one we thought Liam was in earlier. We should at least look in since you thought someone was in there. He continued, nodding in my direction. He began walking with Liam in tow towards the room opposite. I hesitantly followed. I didn't want to go, but I didn't want to be by myself. They tried the handle and tried barging the door, but it would not yield. Oh, it must be barricaded shut somehow. Well, there's no lock, Liam said, looking the door up and down. Oh, let's just head upstairs. I stared at the door, knowing full well it was opening itself earlier. I saw it shut with my own eyes. Brian saw it opening too, but he just wasn't acknowledging the fact that this didn't make any sense. He turned and followed Liam like an obedient puppy to the stairway without saying a word. I was hot on their heels as we began to climb the old stairs. Pieces of concrete from the stairs were crumbling and falling on the floor below with every step. We made it to the third floor. Two rooms on this landing, both without doors. Oh, I'd smell like shit up here, although the whole place smelled like shit to be honest. Immediately, a scraping sound could be heard from the room on the left, like metal on stone. I pulled the hammer from the bag and held it out in front of me, ready for whatever may come at us. Liam just chuckled. Put that away, Danny. You couldn't swing it if you wanted to. He glanced at Brian for approval, but Brian's eyes were fixed on the blackened doorway. A slow, continuous, rhythmic clicking sound began coming from the dark room. Our torches weren't powerful enough to illuminate the inside. They seemed to be reaching the doorway and then losing all light to the darkness beyond. Well, Liam didn't seem phased. I couldn't tell if he was hearing the same things as us. So, uh, we're just standing here then? Liam asked sarcastically. What's up with you two? Do you hear that, Brian? I murmured, ignoring Liam completely. Brian nodded eyes wide and trained on the doorway. Liam scoffed. Oh, very good. Well, I'm going to look in here. If you're both too scared, then wait out here. Liam walked toward the door, getting slower as he got closer. I could tell his brave streak was quickly dissipating. He did continue through, though, albeit cautiously. Liam disappeared into the darkness. Brian looked at me and tilted his head toward the door. Come on. We can't leave him. We need to go in, man. Brian started toward the darkness, the light from his torch disappearing unnaturally the same way Liam had as he'd crossed the threshold. I let out a huge sigh and began walking forward, the ominous click still reverberating in my ears. I entered the black room. The torch wasn't much use. I could only see a couple of feet in front of me. But the room felt huge. I crept around for ages without finding a wall, and the doorway, acting like a safety beacon, seemed to be getting smaller as I continued on. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck off, Brian yelped as I bumped into him. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you, I said, placing a hand on his shoulder. Where the hell is he? No idea. I can't see jack shit in here, Brian replied, sounding agitated. The room appeared to be filled with a thick, black fog that impaired our vision and also our ability to see very far using the torch. The clicks seemed to be getting louder. I really didn't want to follow them, but it was the only source of anything in this room. We had to at least find a wall. I started myself as I bumped into the stone wall. It felt cold and wet, almost slimy. I found a wall. Just follow it, I said, with my hand still on Brian's shoulder. I guided him along the wall, torches in front of us the whole time. Oh, the torches still struggled to cut through the darkness, but only a few feet away I could begin to make out that we were approaching a corner. Adrenaline pumped through my veins and my skin turned to ice, as I also noticed there was a dark figure standing in the corner. <laughs> Liam? I stammered, inching closer, praying this was just another joke. We were close enough now I could make out the clothes and hair. 
It was him, but what the hell was he doing? William, stop it. We found you. Ha <laughs> ha, great joke. Stop being a dick. The figure turned to face us. I could just about make out the white eyes and an expressionless face. It was Liam, but... Well, he seemed really off. The light completely died on mine and Brian's torches now. and We were immediately plunged into the deepest black you could ever imagine. We were frozen in fear. And the room was dead silent. You could literally hear a pin drop. And then, from the corner in front, a scraping sound and some scratching noises inching closer to us. I looked back at our safety beacon at the doorway and saw someone standing there too. We had no way out. The scraping and scratching getting slowly closer and a deep menacing laugh was barely audible but definitely there. And then a low gargling sound that sounded like it was from a distance. We started inching back to avoid Liam's creeping advance. And even though we couldn't see anything, I'm sure I could feel his breath on my face. Hey, uh, what are you two playing at? Let's head upstairs quickly. Liam shouted from about 15 feet away. I turned to the doorway and saw him standing there, looking like his perfectly normal, annoying bastard self. Well, we sprinted to the door, but not before Liam bolted up the stairs to the fourth floor, laughing like a lunatic. Brian and I stopped in the hallway to catch our breath. What was that? What's he up to? With these stupid jokes? I said to Brian, who was looking up the stairwell. And hiding in the corner like a weirdo. I continued after a few breaths. But, um, was it him in the corner, though? Brian said, seeming unsure of himself. Well, I seen him. Yes, it was him. And then when the lights went out, he must have run around to the door. He's trying to scare us again. It's just not happening, man. I felt pissed off at Liam's stupid games. There seemed to have been a bit of role reversal. Ryan now appeared terrified, whereas I felt like I had to suck it up, take the lead here and put a stop to this. I felt proud of myself for not being scared. But then, Brian had to ruin it. How would he know that the torches would stop working? Two torches at the exact same time. Oh, and how could he know we'd find him in there? That room was insanely dark. The time it took him to somehow get past us in pitch blackness and get to the door, then run upstairs was like three seconds. He's done that without a sound. Well, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Brian's voice began trembling. I started to question myself. I could feel the fear building in me once more. I turned to the room. The clicking had stopped, but there were scraping sounds now and again. I turned back to Brian. So... You think that wasn't Liam in there? My voice trembled. He looked up the stairs. Either that or that wasn't Liam who ran up the stairs. Brian looked back at me, looking at me dead in the eyes. Oh, we both saw him. It was him. I felt like I was pleading for an answer, for some sanity. Well, you saw him in there too. What did you see? Was it definitely him? It could have been the shadows or something else. Brian took a few steps toward the door, stopping just in front. Liam! He gave a quick shout. Oh, it was him. It was definitely him, but he, he looked weird. I couldn't make out the full face perfectly, but I know it was him. I was beginning to struggle with my senses. But then we both saw him at the door. It was definitely him being himself, even being a dick. I don't know anymore. Maybe my brain was tricking me. I had to sit on the floor for a second and collect my thoughts. So we can both basically confirm that we're sure Liam ran up the stairs. And I think we should go up there and get him. And then just get out of here. And with that, Brian turned and headed for the stairs. Let me get up two seconds. I got myself to my feet and met him at the bottom of the stairs. They went up and left and then up again. We could see up to the next landing. It looked the same as that room. Here, 
Get the candles, Brian said. We pulled two candles and a lighter from the backpack and lit them. They didn't do much, but it was something. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors for who goes first. Best of three, I suggested. Oh no, we don't have time to fuck around. I'll just go first. Well, thankfully, Brian's brave streak had returned. We crept up the stairs, listening for any sounds. Apart from rubble and junk crunching under our feet, the whole place was relatively quiet. The air felt thicker up here as we approached the last few steps. A dagger-like chill pierced my skin. It was unnaturally cold. Liam, come out, we're going home, Brian called from the top step, holding the candle out in front of him. I joined him at the top and held my candle out in an attempt to light the area up a bit. Here, come and look at this. William's voice echoed from the other end of the hall. No, we just want to go. Just come out. We're not leaving you, Brian replied. Just quickly. You need to see this. And then we can go, Liam called over again. And Brian and I looked at each other and I shook my head. No. No, Liam, no, just hurry up, man. We want to go, Brian shouted. Well, I don't want to go home. Liam's voice sounded closer now. I didn't see anything, but I heard the sharp exhale, and something blew both of our candles out. At the same time, an ear-shattering clatter of metal from way below rung out, like someone emptying a bag of spanners onto the road. We were both absolutely dumbfounded. What the fucking hell was that? Brian was visibly trembling in his boots. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. The ladder, I said as we both began to scramble back down the stairs. My worst fear was confirmed when we reached the steps leading down to the first floor. The ladder had literally been thrown across to the other side of the landing. The Halloween clown decoration was standing in its place. Its eyes lit up, and its mechanical arms and head began to move. Welcome to hell, children, the clown screeched. Part 3 A scream from above us came only too soon after being hit with the horrifying realization we were now trapped with someone or something sinister, stalking us, possibly looking to harm us in some way. I didn't even want to think about it. Oh, that sounded like Liam, Brian said before darting back up the stairs. Brian, wait, slow down. I tried to run up the stairs, but my legs were weak. I got to the third floor only to catch a glimpse of Brian already running up the next set. Brian, slow down, man. Don't leave me, I called out, but he never stopped. I made my way to the next set of stairs to the fourth floor, and, with the legs of jelly, began to haul myself up. Brian, wait, I called again, as I saw him reach the last step. He finally stopped and turned to me. Brian put a finger to his mouth. Shh. I slowed down, trying desperately to control my heavy breathing. I crept up the last few steps. Liam was sitting in the middle of the landing behind a single candle, the dim orange glow dancing on his face as he stared right back at us with a look of panic in his eyes. Brian put one foot on the landing. Liam started shaking his head, eyes growing wider, apparently warning us not to go any further. The candlelight extinguished and Liam screamed. We could hear him being dragged away at a rapid speed, crying, then silence. Silence and darkness. I felt like I was about to cry. I wanted to go home and be with my mum and dad. I wish I'd never agreed to come here. Before I knew it, I was quietly sobbing and fell to my knees, with Brian sitting next to me. We need to do something, Danny. We can't go back down. Also, we can't leave him. Brian put his arm around me. I fell against him. What if something happens to us? I want to go home, Brian. I don't want to be here anymore. 
Images of my family raced through my mind, upsetting me even more. I oh, know, so do I. He tried his best to console me. Do you not think Liam wants to go home too? He's up there himself. God knows what's happening to him. I can't even make sense of what's going on here. All I know is we can't leave him. I dried my eyes. Yeah, okay, okay. I sniffed. I almost felt stupid crying in front of my friends. We need to light these candles again. I have the hammer and this screwdriver. Maybe we should... Uh, we should uh, I see these sandwiches and have a drink or... Uh, Danny, Danny, calm down, Brian interrupted. We're not eating any sandwiches. We need to go now, get the candles, lighter, and the hammer, and ditch the bag for now. I hastily grabbed the two candles and lit them. Wielding the rusty claw hammer, Brian led the way. We stepped onto the fourth floor, holding the candles out in front, constantly checking side to side. The darkness was deep and surrounded us on all sides. Pieces of glass and rocks crunched under our feet as we crept towards the far end. We reached the wall and eventually followed it round to find a door. Brian pushed it open, with candle in hand, hammer raised in the other. Seems quiet. Come on in, Brian whispered. I followed close behind, checking behind me before we were fully inside. This room was a large square. It had an unbroken window on the far end, not boarded up, and a small glint of moonlight granted us some solace from the unrelenting pitch black we'd just come from. I felt more at ease seeing the world from the window, seeing the outside. I felt sad. I wished I could just climb out and be done with this place. Brian was milling around, scouring the room. The light partially illuminated the centre of it, and to a lesser extent the walls, but it was still dark. There were old cupboards and cabinets. Brian was opening them, checking inside in case Liam was hiding, but there was nothing. I felt safe in here. There was nothing scary about this room. I didn't want to leave the window, but Brian told me to get the bag and leave it in here. Well, we'll use this room as a kind of base. If anything happens, always try and make it back here to regroup, no matter what he said as he opened another cabinet. The door came off in his hand. Brian threw it to the ground and wandered up to the window. Hey, you're going to get the bag then? He passed me the hammer. I reluctantly took it and went back outside. Everything about that room was completely different than it was everywhere else. As soon as I stepped out, I felt stalked, like I was being preyed on or attacked. I ran quickly to grab the bag sitting at the top of the stairs. I put my hand on the strap. And from the darkness, the hand grabbed me. Jagged black fingers clasped my arm and tightened all the way round. I looked up and saw Brian's face, smiling with glazed yellow eyes. He put his finger to his mouth. I felt my arm being pulled and I screamed bloody murder. I dropped the candle and tried swinging the hammer, but to no avail. I screamed and cried like I never had before. I heard a door open behind me. A soft candle glow fast approached and suddenly I was being dragged back into the base room. What happened? What was going on? What happened? Brian stuttered in a panic. I couldn't control myself. I was crying like a baby. Danny, Danny, it's okay, man. I've got you. Brian trailed off. Whoa, what the fuck? He said as he lifted my arm. There were long, slender, uniform burns where the hand had grabbed me. Oh, it stinks. It burns. I was finally able to get some words out. and My arm was on fire. I dropped the candle. I think we only have one left. Brian looked at his candle, which had already burned down about halfway. Well, he got the bag at least. What else is in here? Brian rummaged inside, pulling out paper, and eventually found my sister's Polaroid camera. As a last resort, we can use the camera flash if we're stuck. 
The only other thing we can do is crunch this paper into sort of sticks and burn them if we need to. Okay, I nodded, still sniffing. We started crunching up the paper into batten-like shapes and twisted them to make them rigid. But it'll probably only burn for like 20 seconds. That might be all we need. Brian tried his best to reassure me as he continued to make paper battens for burning. We had about 11 or 12 and stuck them in the bag along with the camera. I kept the screwdriver out in case we had to use that as some sort of weapon too. With a lighter handy in my pockets, we rested for a few minutes to try and think of a plan. Hey, uh, do you think we need to go up any more stairs? I asked. Brian got to his feet as he began talking. No idea. We should just go out, follow the wall, and see where it leads. If it goes up, and we go up. If there's another door, we should check inside before going anywhere else. I mean, we need to find Liam. I took one last look out of the window, wondering if I'd ever see the outside again. And I turned to Brian. Hey, let's go for it then, I said, putting my bravest face on. Brian lit the last candle and picked up the hammer. Well, the door opened itself as we approached. Whatever was on the other side wanted us to come out. I wielded the flat-headed screwdriver, ready to stick anything that came for us. My focus was on getting out alive. I couldn't be scared anymore. Brian slowly crossed into the black landing. I had one hand on his jacket and the other holding my weapon in front of my face. When we'd both left the base room... I was on high alert, scanning it all around, just waiting for something to come for us. We walked slow, kept our backs to the wall and sidestepped the perimeter of the hallway, looking for stairs or doors. I felt on edge with every step. The darkness was scrutinizing my movements. Something was there, something dark and hostile. I heard a thud on wood. It's another door, Brian whispered. We barged onto it, but it wouldn't budge. And I saw stairs leading up right next to the door. Hey, shall we, um, go up? I asked. No, we need to burst this door open. Leon could be right in here. And what sounded like a sledgehammer smashing the door from the other side started us both. It was almost coming off the hinges, accompanied by a horrible gargling growl that sounded almost like a lion stalking its prey, only much more guttural. Um, yeah, maybe you just head up the stairs, eh? Brian said, already turning on his heels to run up. I followed close behind. As we neared the top, the banging on the door below abruptly stopped. A rush of air breezed past us. The small stairwell to the bells was in front of us. The bells were within four arched walls. The moon lit the way leading up, and we could see what appeared to be shadows moving around back and forth near the top of the stairs. There were flies and bugs everywhere, and some noisy crows hanging around the arches. Two doors on this level on either side of the stairs seemed to beckon us inside. Faint noises from behind each had us struggling to decide where to go. What do we do? I asked Brian. My voice was shaking to match the rest of my body. I don't know. We just check these rooms, I suppose. There's nothing else we can do. Brian raised the hammer and approached the door on the left. The other door on the right creaked open. Hey, Danny. The cold whisper I'd heard before. In here. I stopped dead in my tracks. Brian's eyes widened as he noticed something peeking out from the creaked opening in the doorway. I began walking over. Brian grabbed my arm, right on the burns. Oh, for fuck's sake, Brian. I put my arm back, blowing on it. I'm sorry. Don't go in there. Just don't. He stared right into my eyes. He was as serious as I'd ever seen him. With just a nod of confirmation, we continued to slowly walk toward the door on the left again. The right door slammed shut in anger. Brian opened the left door. The candle went out and we were plunged into darkness once again. 
Brian swung the hammer up and down and side to side, hitting only the air around him. I crouched down, readying my screwdriver for... Well, I didn't know what for, but I was ready anyway. Brian lit the almost finished candle again. I pulled out some of the makeshift paper candles we'd made. We lit a couple. The flame was bigger and granted us more light. As we entered the room, the most foul stench I've ever had the misfortune of experiencing hit me. The room was cold and covered in black stuff. Some rotting black sludge. Weird figures and trinkets that seemed to be made from some sort of animal parts. And the flies in this room were relentless. The fire from my paper torch managed to light more of the room. And we could see Liam lying in a pile of rags and dead birds. There was a crude circle around him of black and red crystal-like stuff. I immediately darted over to him and grabbed his shoulders. Brian patted his face to wake him up. And he was limp, but he was breathing. His eyes eventually opened. In the very limited light I could see his eyes were bloodshot. His face was covered in cuts, like slashes, and his clothes were torn up. Liam, get up. We're getting out of here. Come on, Brian said. His voice was urgent and demanding. We threw an arm each over our shoulders and began carrying him out towards the stairs. Brian still had the hammer, I held out some paper torches to light our way. We were finally getting out of here. Liam walked as much as he could, helping us as we were struggling. I looked up to the bells as we passed, looking at the moonlight. Oh, I couldn't wait to get out of here. Danny! Brian! A shout from the top of the stairs. I looked up. Liam was lying at the top of the stairs. That's not me. Run, he cried. He was dragged away from our sight, just as the bells began to toll midnight. Part 4 The clanging bell shattered my eardrums. It actually hurt my ears, waiting for them to stop. Liam felt like a dead weight on our shoulders. I can't say if he was conscious or not, but he was slumped. Brian looked at me. What do we do? I shook my head. We can't go up there, Brian, I whispered. But what if that's really him? What if, you know? He darted his eyes towards Liam and tilted his head as he spoke. I looked at him. I looked at Liam. Ryan hushed his voice to a quiet whisper. This might not be Liam. Brian, we're not carrying him up those stairs. How can we trust whoever that was at the top? I seriously didn't want to go, but part of me already knew we were probably going up there. Danny, we can't just ignore the fact that Liam could be up there right now. It's only about 12 steps. We can go and peek, and if there's nobody there, we bolt. I felt like a piece of shit for even considering just dropping Liam and running for my life. I didn't care if I broke my ankles dropping off that first landing. I'd gladly drag myself out that front door just to feel the fresh air on my face again. But I just couldn't. I'd be abandoning my two best friends. They wouldn't abandon me. Alright, we go up and stay on the stairs. We look around for a maximum of ten seconds and then we're off. I mean it, Brian. Brian nodded and began walking. We struggled a little getting Liam up the stairs. And slowly but surely, we made it to the last step. I thought I'd feel the outside breeze from the arches. It never came. It felt like the same stagnant, rancid air that filled everywhere else in this place. I started counting. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven. Danny, Brian. Liam's voice from behind us called out. Why the fuck have you brought that, that thing up here? He continued, seeing himself slumped over our shoulders. We turned to see Liam lying on the floor near one of the walls. He was also cut to ribbons and bruised badly. 
How do we know it's you? I barked at him. Because that thing you're carrying is not me. That's not me. Oh, fuck. Liam cried as he was lifted off the ground by an unseen force and thrown onto the edge of one of the arches. His legs were dangling off the side, facing probably a sixty-foot drop. He cried out and pleaded with us to believe him. I don't want to die. Please. Please, why don't you help me? Please, I want to go home. Tears streamed down his face. I felt helpless. Hold on to him, Brian, I said as I pulled my head out from under Liam's arm. Brian dropped almost to the floor, trying to hold him up. I began to take a few steps towards the arch. I could hear the other Liam's feet scraping the wall outside, trying to get Purchase to pull himself up. Please, Danny, don't let me fall, man, please. Don't do it, Danny. It's a trick. Liam's voice again came from behind me this time, struggling to get his words out. Brian still had his arm over his shoulder. His head was bowed and he was on his knees. Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do here, Liam. Which one's the real you? God, I can't take this. I felt defeated already. My head was spinning with confusion. I was having an emotional meltdown. That's me, they both said at exactly the same time. God, I couldn't think straight. Liam's arm slipped down a little from the arch. Danny, quick, it's me. Help me, please. I had to think on my feet. Right, um, where did we... No, I, I know. Whose ladder did we take up to the second floor? Liam, slipping further to the edge, almost hanging by his fingertips, cried out as loud as I'd ever heard him. My dad, it was my dad's ladder. At the same time behind me, I heard a laboured breath and Liam's voice say, It's my uncle's ladder. Brian dropped him in an instant and took two steps back. His eyes were wide in fear as he watched Liam roll onto his back, taking deep breaths. It's my uncle's ladder, he muttered, just under his breath again. Like a bullet, I darted to the edge of the arched opening and grabbed Liam's arm. Oh, fuck, I'm so sorry, Liam. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Just pull me up, he said. Quick. He looked delighted that I'd figured it out. I tried my best to pull him up by myself, but he was bigger than me, and I was half expecting to be pushed over by something at any second. I pulled and pulled. Brian grabbed my legs and began to pull... I looked back and saw Liam still lying on the ground behind us. Oh, come on, Brian. Pull. We need to pull harder. I screamed. I felt Brian pulling hard on my legs. But I could also... Wait. Could I feel my arm being pulled? Was Liam pulling me out? I looked back down. Liam's face had a wide grin and his eyes had turned bright yellow. Long, black, jagged fingers snaked up my arm like vines and gripped onto me. He was now completely dangling off my arm. I screamed. I screamed so fucking loud at Brian. It's not him. It's not him. Brian, help me. Brian got up and came to the edge to see what I could see, and he almost fell back in horror. Do something, Brian, I shouted. Brian ran back and fetched the hammer. Within a few seconds, he was leaning over, smashing this thing's arm and head, trying with everything he could to loosen its grip. I was able to gain some more ground, sliding back on my stomach, pulling it up slightly. Brian was getting some good headshots, but it barely even reacted. Two seconds, Brian said, and hurried over to the back. I felt myself slipping closer to the edge again. Hurry the fuck up, Brian! I yelled. Brian came back with about six paper battens twisted together and set them alight. The large flame illuminated the distorted, bashed face that mimicked our friend. The glow waltzed in its wide, maniacal eyes before Brian smashed the fire right into its face. A deafening scream filled the air as I felt my arm loosen up. The bells began to ring, louder this time, and Brian started stabbing at it with a screwdriver. The fingers slowly began to release my arm, and eventually I was able to let go. 
I could still see the crooked face grinning and distorting as it fell, and it made no sound. The bell stopped abruptly as a loud thud on the ground confirmed that whatever this was had just smashed into the ground. My arm throbbed and blisters began forming almost immediately. I rolled onto my back, out of breath. Fucking hell, Brian exclaimed. I feel sick. God, my heart's pounding. I'm not feeling so great myself, mate, I replied, shooting him a faint smile, feeling safe enough now to be sarcastic. I just lay there, finally feeling the breeze caress my cheeks. Oh, it felt incredible, cool and fresh. I heard Brian stirring, trying to get to his feet as we both heard Liam groaning behind us where he was still lying on the floor. Brian shuffled over and crouched next to him. He patted Liam's face. Hey, wake up, Liam. It's over, he said. Liam groaned once more and moved his head. Oh, the ladder was my uncle's. My dad didn't have one, he said. Hey, fucking idiots, he coughed as he attempted to laugh. I was glad to hear he hadn't lost his shitty sense of humour, even if it did annoy me. Brian smiled. Well, maybe you could have mentioned that, you fucking moron, he said with a nervous laugh. Hey, come on, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. We need someone tall to drop down the stairs and set up the ladder. Yeah, I hope you're up for that, he laughed. We began getting Liam to sit up and eventually both helped him to his feet. God, I'm sorry about all this, guys. He sounded genuinely remorseful. I got carried away with trying to play stupid pranks. I should never have gone off alone. Look, it's fine, man. I felt like I should reassure him now that all was well. Then I can get mad later when he's better. Right, we've made it. We just need to get out of here. Then we can never look back. We all made it. Together. I continued looking at both Brian and Liam. Heading down the stairs to the fifth floor, everything seemed different. The air had cleared. It still smelled like shit, but there was no feeling of any presence. It wasn't as thick as before. We could actually see in the dark now. I felt my mind and body relax as we walked with ease down to the fourth floor. Liam was regaining some strength as he drank some juice, and the relief of seeing him get visibly better before our eyes was indescribable. Well, I think we should, um, leave our exploration adventures for a while, eh? Liam chuckled to himself. Yeah, maybe schedule the next one for about 30 years, I jested. Brian and Liam both laughed. We began walking down to the third floor. Liam wanted to try the stairs himself, but we were taking our time to let him try and get himself back on his own feet. Liam went first, and we walked slowly behind him ready to grab him should he stumble or fall. I felt my eyes welling up as we got lower and lower in the tower. Every step down felt like a new victory. We'd reached the third floor. Liam burst out laughing. He must have been happy he'd done it himself. Oh, you fucking weirdos. Why did you bring that thing up? He laughed some more. Brian and I looked at each other confused. My eyes squinted as I struggled to see into the middle of the landing. That Halloween clown decoration was standing there, looking right at us. We heard the mechanics start to move. Step right up, children, and get your tickets to hell, the clown shrieked, followed by a frenzied laugh. And it moved, in a different way than before. It appeared to shake and lift off the ground. Before anyone could react, the clown was picked up and launched into the darkness. A figure slowly came forward. Ah, oh, fucking clown, I heard a voice say from the darkness. A voice I recognized only too well. My body went tense. A chill crept up my spine. Brian emerged from the darkness battered and covered in cuts and slashes just like Liam was. Oi, what the fuck? He exclaimed. Guys, get away from that thing. That's not me. We need to get the fuck out of here now, he commanded. 
Oh, there's no way in hell I'm falling for that one again, I thought, just as Liam was shoved to the ground in an instant. Less than a second later, I felt burning fingers begin to slither around my neck from behind. Part 5 The burning black fingers had almost completely wrapped around my neck when Brian grabbed my jacket and pulled me. I jerked forward and could feel my skin peeling off as the snake-like grip released. I fell down, and Brian dragged me backwards to where Liam had already crawled to. What the fuck is that thing? Brian stammered. I'd never heard so much fear in anyone's voice before. I shook my head and we moved further back as the thing in front of us twisted and distorted itself. I, I don't know, Brian. We need to get to the stairs, I said. My voice was shaking so hard I struggled to speak. The whole area turned darker and darker by the second as we watched the deformed figure sculpting itself, bending and snapping into unimaginably twisted forms. The darkness took over. Thick black surrounded every one of us. I could barely hear my friends over the loud cackling of this beast that stood before us under the cover of darkness. I was trembling. I couldn't move. I felt Liam's hand patting my leg, finding me and eventually grabbing me up to my feet. The windows and doors of the rooms either side shattered and burst open. A hurricane-like wind almost blew us off our feet. Glass and debris was flying all around us, smacking and cutting our faces. We huddled together, terrified and helpless. I huddled my head down into Liam's chest, shielding my face and attempting to cover my ears from the deafening sound. Well, I cried. I'm not ashamed. I began crying my freaking eyes out. I genuinely thought we were all dead in that moment. And then, just as quick as it all began, Everything stopped in an instant. We were still huddled together and it was a good few minutes before anyone was brave enough to look up. The darkness still filled the room, but there was a calm. I plucked up the courage to finally look. In the direction of the stairs where we'd come from, I could see two eyes piercing the night. They followed our every move as we inched away. We had no light, but we knew the general direction of where we had to go. A horrible, slow, demonic laugh emanated from the deep chasm before us. The eyes never blinked. They never looked anywhere else. They just watched us. I remembered the Polaroid camera was still in the bag. I hurriedly tried to unzip it with my shaking hands. It was the only possible light source we had left. The scraping and crunching of soft, dragging footsteps began to approach us slowly. I lifted the camera up and clicked. A bright flash illuminated the entire room for a split second. We saw the stairs leading up and down. We saw what direction we had to go. We also saw a tall black mass with elongated limbs and pointed features stalking us. We began moving toward the direction of the stairs. A rush of bitter cold sulfuric wind slapped our cheeks and burned our noses. The smell was almost unbearable. I felt something caress my shin and foot, along with a haunting little girl's giggle. I'm out of the stairs, Brian yelped as he almost fell down. I flashed the camera again. The photo bumped my knee as it fell to the ground and made me flinch. The flash revealed it was in the farthest away corner now, still staring at us intently, but seemed further away as we stepped down one at a time. I flashed the camera down the stairs. Everything seemed clear. The photo gently clapped onto the step. We continued our descent, holding onto each other for dear life until we reached the second landing. I again snapped the camera into the darkness. A line of small, hunched-over shadow figures stood all around, just watching. Then I snapped back up the stairs. The huge demonic beast-like figure was crawling down the steps behind us on all fours. So quiet we never heard a thing. We could see eyes trained on us from everywhere when the flash disappeared. 
I had visions of us getting to the part of the stairs that had crumbled away, and all of us being thrown off. I had visions of us being captured here forever and slaughtered in the most horrific ways. I snapped another photograph. The flash lit the way to the last set of stairs. We held onto each other and bolted for it. I felt things grab at my face and legs, pulling my jacket, and by the sound of Brian and Liam screaming, I imagined they were feeling the same. We darted down the first few steps as I clicked the camera once more. The flash came up just in time for us to stop. Well, the first floor seemed further down than before. Liam, without hesitation, began crouching down, ready to dangle himself off the crumpled stairway and drop down. We just had to hope he wouldn't injure himself. I flashed the camera back upstairs. We could see a crowd of black shadows beginning to form at the top. My heart was racing, and I felt faint. The photo fell again to the ground and grazed my leg. I almost fell backwards. The sound of a grunt with broken glass and stones being disturbed from below confirmed to us that Liam had made the drop. You okay? Brian shouted. I'm fine. Where's this fucking lad? Liam screamed back, sounding panicked. I hit the camera again. The ladder was in the far corner. There were rocks and wood lying all over the place. I keep going, Danny. I don't want to hurt myself here, Liam instructed. He sounded a little more optimistic that we might be able to make it now. I snapped as quickly as I could, and after every two or three, I turned the camera upstairs. The crowd of figures were getting larger every time. Some of them began taking a step or two down. Liam, we need to be quick, man, I screamed. Brian was shaking like a leaf. I kept clicking the camera. The photos were falling like autumn leaves all around us. Liam made it to the ladder and picked it up. I kept that flash going as much as possible until he was able to get back and set it up right underneath us. Brian went first. I used the flash to guide him as best I could. He made it no problem. As he climbed down, I flashed the camera back up the stairs. Oh, the shadow figures were closing in, only about four steps away. I had to move fast. I crouched and got down onto my stomach. I began to throw my legs over the edge. Icy, cold, putrid breath met my face as I carefully lowered myself to the ladder. Sheer terror and adrenaline consumed me as I tried so hard not to fall. Every part of my body was shaking violently as I felt something slowly creep up my hand and onto my wrist. Oh, I screamed. I screamed as I tried to lower myself faster. I was terrified of falling and I was terrified of lingering too long. I felt my foot just touch the top step and then I was able to lower myself to the second step down, holding the crumpled stair by nothing more than my fingertips. As I heard something laughing from above me, I felt the stairs begin to crumble and crack more. The time was now. I had to just go for it, all or nothing. I let go and quickly got my foot onto the third step, immediately dropping myself to grab hold of the top rung. Oh, the ladder shook violently and began to topple, and I screamed for help. Brian and Liam attempted to steady it, but I could feel it falling. I quickly got down another few steps before the ladder clattered onto the ground, taking me with it. Well, luckily, I was around the halfway point and I didn't fall too far. I'd hurt my arm and leg on one side, but mostly felt okay to continue. I flashed the camera up one last time to see multiple arms dangling down, grabbing indiscriminately at us. Run, just fucking run, Liam said, turning immediately. We dashed for the last set of stairs, leaving the ladder where it had fallen, almost tripping over each other as we scrambled to make it down to the ground level. The front door lay open spilling a small amount of moonlight inside the building. As we approached the bottom of the stairs, the door slammed shut with such force it appeared to crack the wood. A monstrous roar followed us down the stairs, and there was only one thing for it. We all ran together to start kicking and bashing at the door. We were all now screaming and crying while frantically kicking and shoulder-barging the door. 
The sounds got closer and closer until eventually everything stopped. Everything felt quiet and calm. The door slowly creaked open and we all took a step back. We all looked at one another. Then Brian just said, Bolt! And with that we ran as fast as we could to the perimeter fence. Liam boosted me over first, then Brian, and he was able to scale the fence himself with such ease he was on his bike before any of us. We cycled like madmen through the forest trails guided by the scarce moonlight piercing through the trees. I can't even describe the relief I felt when we made it to the road. The cool, fresh night air filled my lungs. I felt like I'd been reborn. And I smiled. I actually smiled. We cycled all the way back to Liam's and snuck into his garage where we stayed until the sun came up. Well, we struggled to calm ourselves down after what had just happened. I mostly sat in complete silence. Full of adrenaline but too afraid to move or make any sound. The sky was getting lighter by the minute. Liam stood up and checked if we were awake. I'm going to bed, guys. I need to try and sleep. Just stay here as long as you want, he said as he turned and went inside. I looked at Brian, who was lying on the floor with wide bloodshot eyes. Right, I uh, might try and head home too, man, I said to him. Brian nodded. What are you going to do? Don't know. I think I'll leave soon. Just trying to get my head sorted out, he replied. I'll be okay. You get yourself home, Danny. I nodded at Brian. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'll catch you later, mate, I said as I walked to the side door. As I cycled through the streets, the sun felt amazing on my face. Seeing people going about their business, driving cars, walking around, dogs barking, birds singing. Everything felt normal again. As I approached my house, I could see my parents in the window, and I had never felt so happy to see them. I went inside, hiding my arms and neck as much as possible, in case the burns were visible. Hi, son. How was your night? Want some toast? My dad said. I'm okay, Dad. We stayed up all night playing the computer. God, I really need some sleep, I replied. He rolled his eyes and shook his head. <clears throat> no problem. Yeah, yeah, some rest. I climbed the stairs, legs struggling like hell, but it couldn't have been more worth it when I fell onto my mattress. My room was nice and cool and my bed felt like a cloud. And I sparked out almost immediately. I slept right through until dusk. When I woke up, my mum had left me some pizza lying on my bedside table. I sat up, put the TV on, picked a slice up and started flicking through the channels. My stomach was grateful for the food. Something scraped my thigh, kind of like a tickle from something sharp. I got a fright but remembered where I was. Eventually, I poured the duvet off me. Immediately everything flashed into my mind as I sat there. Everything rushed back to me in a split second and I dropped my pizza. My mind raced, as did my heart. On the bed, all around me. Polaroids. Lots of Polaroids. I picked them up and began nervously flicking through. The first was a photo from the crumbled stairs showing Liam under us and the ladder in the far corner. As I hesitantly flicked through one by one, Liam got closer. As something began to appear in the corner. A long, black, shadowy mass, tall and thin, stood just beyond the ladder. Liam picks up the ladder, and like a stop-motion picture, slowly jerks his way towards us on the stairs. The shadow figure follows very close behind. Liam sets the ladder up, and the shadow is now directly in front of him. But he's completely oblivious, as we all are. As Brian begins crawling down the ladder, Meanwhile, the shadow figure has long fingers wrapped around Liam's neck. Brian reaches the bottom, and the shadow figure is gone. The last photograph was just before I climbed down myself. Brian's looking up, waving me down with his hand in the air. 
Liam's finger is outstretched, beckoning me with a jagged black hand as he smiles right into the camera with glowing yellow eyes. The eyes seem to follow me. I jump back in my bed and threw the photograph to the ground. The bedroom door handle began to turn slowly, and the door cracked open. I pulled the cover up and hid my face. Danny, a soft voice quietly called. It was my mum. I pulled the covers back down from my face and looked at her. Oh, sorry, son. I thought you might be still sleeping. Are you okay? She continued, entering my room. I'm fine. Just tired, I replied. Okay, well, when you get up, you can tidy this room up, she moaned. I rolled my eyes. Oh, your um, friend Brian's on the phone. He said you've left some stuff at his house, she mumbled, looking around my room as she was handing me the receiver. Thanks, I said, showing her out of my room with my hand. I put the phone to my ear. He, um, what's up, Brian? Danny. Brian's voice sounded horrendous. He sounded like someone was holding a gun to his head. Danny! He trailed off. What's going on, Brian? I said sternly. I could swear I could hear him sobbing down the line. Liam's missing, Brian stammered. His voice was weak and shaking. I looked at the photo I'd just thrown on the floor. His eyes were still trained on me from the bell tower his finger slowly curling in, summoning me. Danny, did you hear me? Brian asked, sounding agitated. Yeah, I think I know where he is, I replied. So there we go, uh, deliciously long and tense story for you there for your Wednesday evening's entertainment. Oh, I really love that one. Kept the uh, creepiness going right the way through. Just enough relief to you to be able to whew, take in a breath, but yeah, non-stop. Ah, terror. And um, as you can tell from the end, there's going to be a follow-up story to that one. So um, I'll certainly be reading it, and I'll hope you'll all be around to listen and enjoy it as well. Well, that's it for this evening, but I will be back again with a podcast on my second channel. I'm also doing lots of work for the Chilling app, and uh, tonight's author, Reggae Junkie G. I've also read one of his stories over on the Chilling app. That'll be coming out pretty soon, I think. So if you love this story, and if you're just looking for a good app with uh, no adverts or anything, that's my recommendation. Of course it is. I'm on there. <laughs> many, many hours of stories from me there now. Well, that's it for this evening. Till the next time, my dear friends, very, very sweet dreams, and bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me, and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram... You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.